Hey, what's going on, guys? Mush back at it with another video. Want to go over some very exciting, potentially exciting, I should say, comments from Valve saying that they're absolutely seeing Half Life Alex as the return to the world, not the end of it. Now, it's Valve, so I don't want people to get too excited and thinking this is marking Half Life 3 definitely happening because, look, Valve has said a lot of things. We've speculated a lot of things from Valve and they haven't come to fruition. A lot of them haven't. Uh, this is a little interesting because it's coming directly from the horse's mouth, so I'll go over that. Also, we've got the updates to Xbox Game Pass in the month of March. Probably one of their weaker updates that they've had so far, but we've got a new release that is incredibly exciting and I'm super stoked for, so we'll go over that after we talk Valve. So, Valve noted, we absolutely see Half-Life Alex as our return to this world, not the end of it. Valve has indicated more Half-Life games will follow the release of the VR exclusive title Half-Life Alex, putting Half-Life 3 hopefuls on alert. In an interview with Game Informer, Valve's Robin Walker was asked directly whether the company was still working on Half-Life 3, and here was his response. Quote, Half-Life means a lot to us, and it's been incredibly rewarding to re-familiarize ourselves with its character settings and mechanics. There are Half-Life Alex team members who have been at Valve since Half-Life 2, and quite a few go back to the original Half-Life. There are also people on the team for whom Half-Life Alex is their first time working on this series at all, and many of them certainly hope it's not the last. We absolutely see Half-Life Alex as our return to this world, not the end of it. Walker also confirmed Half-Life Alex will carry the Half-Life story forward despite being a prequel. Half-Life Alex is a full-fledged entry in the Half-Life series. Both in terms of sheer amount of content as well as the importance and substance of its narrative relative to the rest of the series. It's a critical part of the larger story and it does push that story forward but will it give some closure on the end of episode 2 which came out before the dawn of time it's not a bad idea for players to have refreshed themselves on the events of episode 2 before starting Half-Life Alex Walker said cryptically now Half-Life Alex looks absolutely awesome IGN just had an in-depth gameplay preview on it and looking at that game visually and gameplay wise that is absolutely going to be a system seller for a lot of people on VR however at the end of the day VR is a pretty significant barrier to get into and not everybody is going to go down that rabbit hole of spending, you know, hundreds of dollars for a VR unit. It's just a big ask for something, no matter how quality of a game is. Look, everybody's not going to buy a next-gen console right out of the gate just because of one game. You have to offer a lot, and some people are not even going to have the hardware to push VR games at the highest quality level. You guys get the idea. There's a lot of barriers to VR, and as big as Half-Life Alex is, that VR barrier is going to offer something of a barrier to a lot of people to actually play this game. I know a lot of people want to play this game, but at the end of the day, it's a $60 game, and then you'll have to spell, uh, spend multiple hundreds of dollars on a VR unit. That is a tall, tall ask for a lot of people, especially if you're going the Valve VR Index route. I mean, that's just so expensive and for a lot of people that's just not going to be feasible especially when you're talking about the alternative is hey let me just stick with my pc let me put that money towards the games that are coming out for a lot of people that's just going to be the more enticing option as good as half-life alex looks now me personally speaking i look at the vr library i'm just like wow the vr library is growing at a rapid pace and i think sooner rather than later vr is going to be something that is a little bit of a necessity for people that do want to play all of the high quality games but at the end of the day there are a lot of games released for non-VR platforms, so it's a catch-22. Half-Life Alex, I'm sure, is going to sell very, very well. I guarantee you it's going to be the top seller on Steam the day it comes out, but I know that a lot of people do want to see a traditional Half-Life game, and a lot of people want to see Half-Life 3. That game, if it ever came to fruition, and I think one day it might, I'm just scared that I might be dead by then. But when it does come out, if it's 2084 or something like that, I do think it's going to be the, one of the biggest selling games of all time. I do not think it's hyperbole in saying that just because there is this grandiose level of hype and expectations. And when they even drop a teaser trailer, I guarantee you that game is going to break the internet. It's going to be all over social media. And I don't even like to hypothesize about the game because, again, I might be dead before Half-Life 3 ever comes to fruition. And that is a very depressing reality that I have have to accept but it is what it is in that regard half-life alex is looking really good i really hope that this does set the table for not only more half-life games but god damn it valve you've got so many compelling ips in your books you've got left for dead you've got portal you've got a talented studio that can create so many more compelling games and not just free to play card games that you drop after a hot minute on the steam store not just continuing to work on csgo even though i understand that is a significant revenue stream for you guys 
You guys have so many compelling IPs. You guys have great developers. If you put the Valve label on a new IP, you know that's going to garner some traction right out of the gate, unless it's some free-to-play card game or anything like that. You know, Artifact, everybody knows the meme about that. But nonetheless, I just want to see Valve get back to game development. I want to see more Half-Life. Half-Life is such an iconic franchise, and the fact that it's been absent for this long, I mean, come on, and it's not like the story was conclusive. What is going on? Half-Life 2, when did that come out? It's been well over a decade, so... Getting some finality in that franchise would be great. Of course, Half-Life Alex is due out relatively soon. Uh, they just announced the release date, actually, and it's completely escaping me right now. March 23rd is the release date, so yeah, pretty close to the release of that, and that's probably a game that's going to make me bite the bullet and get VR on PC. I have PlayStation VR. I've liked my time with that, um, but PC VR definitely has a lot more opportunities for something incredible. All right, moving on from that, I do want to note what's coming soon to Xbox Game Pass for PC. Not a lot of great games coming in March, however, definitely highlight, but, uh, highlighted by Ori and the Will of the Wisps, available on release day for Xbox Game Pass for PC. Ori is no stranger to peril, but when a fateful flight puts the outlet coup in harm's way, it'll take more than bravery to bring a family back together, heal a broken land, and discover Ori's true destiny. Embark on an all-new adventure in a vast world filled with new friends and foes that come to life in stunning hand-painted artwork. Set to a fully orchestrated original score, Ori and the Will of the Wisps continues Moon Studios' tradition of tightly crafted platforming action and deeply emotional storytelling. They are touting that this game is going to be three times the size as Ori and the Blind Forest, and that's a significant increase in size when you consider the fact that it's not like this is going to be a full $60 game. Hell, it's going to be available directly on Xbox Game Pass, $5 a month. Now, you also have to ascertain the fact that all of these inclusions are outside of the fact that Halo 1 just got added to Game Pass as well, so the was a significant addition and you couple in Ori and the Will of Wisps. Those are two major games being added to Xbox Game Pass on PC in the month of March. So really, I would say March's offerings are rather good. Other games, again, nothing that is super standout. Lord of the Rings Adventure Card Game, Mother Russia Bleeds, an old-fashioned beat-em-up with big doses of adrenaline and trippiness somewhere between the classic style of Streets of Rage and the ultra-violence of Hotline Miami. Definitely an interesting game. However, I don't know how many people are going to end up checking that out. Uh, Pikuniku, it an absurdly wonderful puzzle exploration game. Probably butchered the pronunciation of that. Whatever. And then you have Train Sim World 2020. And a lot of other games are available. Bleeding Edge will be headed into beta from March 13th to the 15th. March 13th, State of De uh, Decay 2 Juggernaut Edition will be added. And then obviously available right now, Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary and Halo MCC. So that's definitely great. Games will be leaving soon on uh, Game Pass for PC. That includes Apocalypse, uh, Lick Spear, uh, Double Spear Edition, Shenmue 1 and 2, which is probably the significant uh, games leaving, Thimbleweed Park will be leaving as well, and then Tiny Quest Anniversary Edition, that is a reality in uh, subscription services that have games rotating in and out. Some games are ultimately going to rotate out. So that's going to conclude this video. Again, hopefully we see more Half-Life. Hopefully we see Valve get into the game development space. But for now, let's just be excited for Alex and hopefully the doors are open for more games in the future. And Xbox Game Pass getting a pretty good update in March with Halo 1, Ori and the Will of Wisps. Everything else a little bit underwhelming. However, two headliners definitely do make a solid month in my opinion. Opinion. That's going to wrap up this video. If you guys have a request for a future video, you can leave that in the comment section down below, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out. Hey, what's going on, guys? Mush here again. Hope you enjoyed the video. As you guys might know, YouTube's notification system is sometimes a little bit wonky, even if you're subscribed to the channel. Maybe you're not abundantly aware that I uploaded a video to remedy that situation. Make sure you hit the bell notification button. This way, whenever I upload a new video and I try to upload as consistently as possible, you will be notified directly of the upload and you can watch it as soon as it goes live. I would really appreciate if you guys hit that button so you can stay up to date with all of the content I'm posting. But as always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.